back, everybody, to another edition of MLB DFS Quick Hits. Here on Wednesday, July 11th edition. We have a loaded 11-game slate on tap. I hope everybody enjoyed their 15-gamer on Tuesday. Lots of ways to go. Um, very, very interesting stuff. DeSantos got it done for us, though, the youngster. Looked really, really good, and uh, other stuff worked out quite well. Other stuff, not so much. A little mix match of fun. Um, and we, we, we picked up stuff like always. Like, I know I keep saying it to you guys, but uh, join us in the Slack chat. Lots and lots of fun. Had a couple new guys join here recently. The more we get, the more we talk, the more it gets going. And it's been picking up steam. So really, really good stuff. And build it up for um, the football season. We got uh, golf going in there. If you have any questions, uh, Jesse, myself, Rob will be in and out throughout the day. We try to make a point on Wednesday evenings to be in there a little, like way more frequently. So any questions you have, fire away. We'll help you get your golf lineups ready for John Deere this week, the Open next week. And then baseball every day. We've got golf, or, uh, NFL coming up, and then you have NBA. Whatever you want. There's a betting page in there, so knock yourselves out. Come on down. Have some fun. You don't have to pay for it at all. So 11-game slate on tap tonight. Let's talk about the totals on the slate. Yankees, Orioles, 9.5. Reds, Indians, 9. Brewers, Marlins, 8. Phillies, Mets, 7. Rangers, Red Sox, 8.5. Blue Jays, Braves, 9. A's, Astros, 8. Cardinals, White Sox, 9. D-backs, Rockies, 11.5. Mariners, Angels, 8.5. Dodgers, Padres, 7.5. So some decent totals, not nearly the insanity we saw last night, but still some really good ones. We got one, two, we got two teams over six. We have one, two, three, four, five more over five. So that's seven totals out of our 22 at five or more. You throw the Braves in there for if, if you want. They're at a four, nine, six. Um, so one of those totals is the day game. Sorry. So we have like eight totals, seven or eight totals overall to include the Braves that are five or above. So lots and lots to uh, to dig into combats-wise. Coors has an amazing spot to target tonight, unlike last night, but you might not have to go there. So let's talk about the bats on or the pitchers first on this slate. You got five guys over 10K. Sale, DeGrom, McCullers, Peralta, and fulton Just telling you right now, I'm not going to go to Fulte. He could be in a great spot. Could be the sneaky one up here. But if I'm paying up, I'm paying up. And Freddie Peralta, I love the kid. 10-3. He could be a GPP play for you if you want to pivot. Not one of my targets, though. Chris Sale at 13000 outstanding. Top play on the board. If you are paying up and you want to get cheaper bats, you go Chris Sale. That's about as cookie cutter as I'm going to get with you. I am not even going to get into the deep stats. This guy has been lights out. The strikeout rate is insanity. This keeps getting better and better. He started out the year slow. This is reminiscent of 2017 Corey Kluber where things started out slow. People got concerned, and then he just got it on, and he's just been pure, pure, Filth. He has essentially six straight starts of 30 or more DraftKings points. So Chris Sale, far and away the best option on the slate up top. But really close second would be Jacob DeGrom at $12,000. $1,000 cheaper against the Philadelphia Phillies. DeGrom, you know, coming off a 28.4 point performance uh, on the season. He's averaging 25 a game. He's averaged 27 in his last 10. He uh, had a very short little... Uh, outing against Philly earlier this year, so we don't even take that into consideration. Uh, I'd go sail over to Grom, both in great spots. Philadelphia does strike out a lot more than Texas, 26% K rate. Both phenomenal plays. Either way, don't mind them at all. My top guy up here, and it's only a price point thing, it's because it's $11,000 and you're saving 2K on sale, 1K on DeGrom, and that money can come up very, very huge for bats is Lance McCullers. $11,000. He's been so, so good. People are you know, that wrote him off for this year, starting to get to him. His ERA is down to 3 4 1, 118 Ks already on the season. He's uh, faced Oakland three times this year, 19 innings pitched, and only given up four earned runs in those 19 innings with 15 Ks. He's averaging 22 DraftKings points per start against the Oakland Athletics. He's been better at home this year than on the road. He's coming off a 39.4 point performance against the Chicago White Sox, 30 point performance against Tampa Bay. He has 1, 2, 3, 4. Four straight starts of seven or more strikeouts. Five straight starts of 20 or more DraftKings points. This is a phenomenal spot for Lance McCullers. He's been flipping the good old Uncle Charlie like crazy. Minus 240 road fav- or home favorite. Chris Sale's a minus 360 favorite, by the way. Uh, Lance McCullers, t- Oakland strikes out 22% of the time. He's got a 56% ground ball rate to go with his 27% K rate and 13.5% swinging strike rate. Love, love, love Lance McCullers tonight. Um, when you want to talk about those big three right there, the Rangers have the lowest total at 2.16, A's 2.87, Phillies 3.05. All three are phenomenal spots. Phenomenal. If you're paying up. You don't have to. But I'd rank it McCullers, Sale, DeGrom, just based on price point alone. But that's where I'm going on that one. 
Now let's get into kind of more of the decision-making process because those are easy. If you have extra cash, boom, you go up there, you sit back, you pray they just don't have that random blow up they can have and pitch the way they can because they'll dominate and they'll put points on your board. But that means you have to play with different bats. If you want to play with some what people think are safer bats, which in baseball, not always the case, we go down the board a little bit. We look at Kinta Maeda at 9300 bucks at the San Diego Padres. Maeda, you couldn't ask for a better dream matchup. Going up against the Padres team that sucks against right-handed bats. He's averaging 16 points a game on the road this year. He's faced the Padres twice, 10 and two-thirds, 7 and 17 strikeouts. That last number is why you target the Padres, especially against right-handed pitching. Even Rich Hill, who gave up two homers, which, remember back to yesterday, I said he loves to give up at least one or more home runs a game. Gives up two in the same inning. Only hiccup he had. Still struck out a ton. Still got you like 17 points. You wanted more, but it didn't crush your night. Uh, it didn't give you the big payday, but it didn't crush you. Um, he's averaging 19 points a game against the San Diego Padres, even though he's given up seven earned and ten and two thirds. The strikeout rates are legit. He's got three straight games of nine Ks at LA, home against Colorado, home against the Cubs. He's got 25 8, 25 6, 35 4. He is looking really good. And that's only with an 86, 97, 84 pitch count. They usually try to. They, but it is an interesting case because they could pull him early and it's frustrating, but A, he's got the strikeouts going. B, they usually try to get him like around 25 batters face. If you look at his last three games, the pitch counts were 86, 97, 84, but the batters face were 22, 28, 24. It just kind of fluctuates with how they're going with him. Um, that's the only scary part about it because Dave Roberts can can really screw this up. But at 9300 bucks, if you're not going all the way to the top, this is your top price guy. If you're not going into the 10K and above, Kent Maeda is in a locked-in spot. Padres 26% K rate versus right-handed uh, pitchers. Maeda's got a twenty almost 29% strikeout rate. 14% swinging strike rate, 39% ground ball rate. The, the sky's aligned in this one. The Padres had the fourth lowest total outside of the big three at 3.42. Lefty's 323, righty's only 272 versus Maeda. We always talk about the Padres, not the scariest group of lefty bats. And they have a 287 Woba and a 122 ISO. I know I say it over and over again. If you listen enough, you should almost have some of these memorized, even though they obviously change as the season goes on. But they're dreadful, dreadful for right handed pitching. So Kent Maeda at 9300 bucks, outstanding tonight if you don't want to go all the way to the top. Absolutely love me some Kenta Maeda. Next up, we got Vinny Velasquez coming off the DL 8100 at the New York Mets. As if you're a regular to the Quick Hits broadcast, you know we are big fans of uh, Vinny V when it comes to GPP games. He's averaging 18 points a game on the road with a 2.79 ERA compared to a 6.16 ERA on the road. And he's coming off, you know, where he got hurt. So he only pitched two innings against Washington. Gave up the one earned three Ks. We got banged up, had to leave. It was that line drive off the arm. Since it was a line drive thing, it should have nothing to do with ligaments, anything in the past. So we're good. And prior to that, 19-3, 17-5, 25-2. He had that mess up at Milwaukee, 10 minus 10.4. But then 26-7, 17-8, 20.4, 24-1, 31-9. So one bad start out of his – we're not even going to count the last – so one out of his last nine was bad. He's average. He had 17.5 or more in eight other starts. He's 8100 bucks against a New York Mets team who we just rolled out De Los Santos with, who was $600 cheaper, 6Ks and 6 and a thirds, got you almost 19 DraftKings points. They strike out 21.6% of the time. Vinny V is a 28.5% K guy, 40% ground ball, 12% swinging strike. The Mets offense is just not good. That's obvious. 3.95 total. Lefty's 308, righty's 280 versus Vinny. 309 Woba, 166 ISO, both average versus right-handed pitching. Uh, we know Vinny can once in a while kind of lose his, his his ways. Well, it's nice as well to say it. But when it comes down to it, 8100 bucks, love it. Love the play with uh, Vinny V. So I got Maeda, Vinny V in the middle at 1 and 2. And these are both options I will definitely get behind tonight. Now it gets a little more fun. You can look at guys like Luke Weaver in an amazing spot at the Chicago White Sox. $7,700. We love targeting the White Sox, especially with right-handed bats. Uh, Lukey boy, he just can be tilting. You know, 30.8 at SF, minus 2.7 against Atlanta. 26.6 at Milwaukee, 4.7 at Philly, 6. He really struggles third time through the order. We talked about that before. The White Sox aren't, you know, complete pushovers. You look at Luke Weaver here, when I can find him. There he is. Chicago strikes out 25.5% of the time. I guess right-handed pitching. So that's really, really good. Got a 40% ground ball rate. Tons of hard contact when it comes to Luke Weaver. The White Sox... Team total is where'd you go? Um, Four point three. Lefties three sixty four. Righties three hundred five versus Luke. But you know a three hundred six Woba one sixty two ISO barely average against right handed pitching. 
So Weaver is in play at 7,700. Not my favorite play, but is in play in a GPP. But Marco Gonzalez, on the other hand, at 7K at the Angels, this is a guy I like. Um, he's averaging 17.6 a game versus the Angels in three starts, 17 innings pitched, 8 earned, 21 Ks. He's been damn good. 25-3 his last time against the Angels, 34-6 previously against Kansas City. He's getting better and better as it goes on. Six or more Ks in three straight starts. Five or more in five straight starts, which is really, really good. So Marco at 7K against the Angels team. Sure, it's the fourth time we'll see him. Sure, it's back-to-back starts. Some guys don't like that. Uh, isn't a really good spot here against the Halos. Uh, lefties 329, righties 333. A 295 Woba, below average Woba versus left-handed pitching for the Angels. And a 150 ISO, which is barely average. So they have had their struggles against the lefties, and they've had their struggles against Marco Gonzalez. So at 7K, Marco is a guy I can definitely get behind in that matchup, pitching in L.A., which is a little more hitter-friendly than other ballparks around baseball. Now, when you drop below the 7K, you got a matchup between Sonny Gray and Dylan Bundy. GPP only, super dicey, but there is upside here. We like Sonny Gray on the road. Sure, he had his hiccup against Toronto his last time out, which is very disappointing, but usually on the road, he's been very, very good, averaging 16 points to start. He's faced Baltimore twice this year and pitched really well. 12 innings pitched, four earned, um, 10 Ks, averaging 20.2 a start against the Baltimore Orioles. So he's an option for you against an Orioles team that we know does strike out quite a bit, 24.5% of the time versus right-handed pitching. And Gray's got his 48% ground ball rate with a 20% K rate. Just got to keep the ball in the yard. Now when you look at Dylan Bundy at 6,100, an even bigger kind of GPP idea here. He has not faced the Yankees yet this year. He's a very hit and miss. Got beat up at Minnesota's last time out prior to that. 24-9, 15-3, 29-26-2, 12-9, 46-4, 17-3, 30.2, then a minus 18.2. So in between, there's eight starts in between two just blow-ups where he had basically 13 or more points at 6,100 bucks. This is something you can look into. Yes, the Yankees can go deep quite a bit, but when you look at a guy like Dylan Bundy, he can get the strikeouts because the Yankees strike out 23.5% of the time. Dylan Bundy case, 26.3% of the batters he faces with a 13.4% swing strike rate. Yes, uh, the fly balls are not ideal. The Yankees team total is 5.03. Lefties, 393. Righties, 289. So it's very, very risky, but the upside could be there in GPP with Bundy. Both are very risky. Both upside type plays. So down below, I got Marco Gonzalez, 1. Luke Weaver, 2. And then you got Gray and Bundy. Recapping your pitching real quick up top, I got McCullers, Sale, DeGrom, strictly price-based in my system. In the middle, Maeda and Velasquez, love those as starting points. If you don't want to go all the way to the top, I, or even match the two of them up, good either way. And then down below, Marco Gonzalez, Weaver, Gray, and Bundy. So, you know, you can get one of the Maeda Velasquez guys, mix them with Gonzalez and rock and roll, stuff like that, if you don't want to go all the way to the top and get all the bats. Speaking of bats, let's get at it. But before we do so, Got to talk to you about Draft. Draft.com. Draft in your app store. Great way to play fantasy sports. Snake style draft just the way you like them. Uh, just the way you do your season-long drafts. You select five players. You're in, you're out, you're done. They got PGA going up. John Deere Classic kicks off tomorrow. Very interesting field. Check out the Always Pressing PGA DFS podcast to get your info on that one. You got uh, the NFL Best Balls. Those are running like crazy. You got baseball, of course. They do hockey. They do basketball. They do it all. Tons and tons of fun. If you haven't played it before, use promo code SD Sports when you make your first deposit. You'll get entry into a free $3 tournament. So tons going on there. Go check it out. Draft.com. Draft in your app store. Promo code SD Sports for entry into a free $3 tournament. Let's get to the bats on this 11 game Wednesday slate. And we'll kick it off with the catcher's position. Our boy Wilson Ramos ain't on this slate as he's been crushing it for us the last couple games. So we'll have to pass on that, obviously. But you got the likes of. Uh, Murphy and Coors at 4,100. John Ryan Murphy, so that's an interesting play there. But uh, guys like Yadi Molina against Carlos Rodon at 38. Definitely in play as one of the higher guys on this slate to look at. Uh, Jan Gomes I will keep looking at over and over at 3,500 just because of what he's bringing to the table. Um, I did not see him. I figured he'd be higher up. Yeah, Tom Murphy at 3,600 for Shelby Miller. That's a nice cheap piece of Coors. I know it's a catcher, so you don't really want to go there. But this is why I said yesterday we faded Coors. We talked about the slack chat over and over. You can fade Coors. I still think you can tonight based on all these other high totals you can target, other great matchups. But Colorado's got the second highest total at 6.04. Red Sox are higher at 6.34. Shelby Miller's been horrible. Absolutely horrible. So it's a great spot for the Rockies. And uh, guys like Tommy Murphy at 3,600. Just Shelby Miller's bad, 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 bad. Um, sliding down the list, though, 
You guys like Tucker Barnard at 3,100 versus Carrasco. Again, not ideal, but he's a guy you can kind of, in a cash game, throw out there if you need to. Uh, down below, it's been a little bleaker of late, but maybe an Omar Navarro's 2,800 versus Weaver. See if Smith catches for Chicago. One of those guys gets Luke Weaver. You can go there. Uh, Martin Maldonado, 2,800 versus Gonzalez. Not running to, to target Gonzalez, but he's another cheap option you can look at. Um, if Chris Herman cracks the lineup for Seattle, he's catcher outfield eligible. He's 2,600 versus Barria. That's one I could do definitely as a cheap punt. Other than that, you'll have to check your lineups because it's uh, pretty rough down below in the catcher world these days. It used to be pretty easy. Not so much anymore. Let's go to the first base position. you got Goldie and Coors against Marquez at 59. Definitely like that. Arizona's got that uh, third highest total of 546. Lefty's 324. Righty's 283 versus Marquez. So uh, Goldie at 59 is definitely in play. you got Freddie Freeman going up against Sam Gaviglio. Lefty's at 341. Righty's 296. Freddie could get going again here at 52. Could be very interesting. But guys like Jesus Aguilar at 47 and Dan Straley like that one quite a bit. Uh, Max Muncy went deep in the ninth yesterday, so maybe that'll get him off the schneid. He's 4,600 against Lucchesi, but uh, not running to play that one either. First base, you know, you got Goldie and Freeman and Aguilar up top. They're not the most sexy plays. So you might be able to save some money at first like we've been doing the last few days. If you want to go like GPP, you can look like a Mark Trumbo to go deep off of Sonny Gray at 43. Or you go down to guys like Mitchie, Mitchie Two Bags at 41 versus Bartolo Colon. Or Steve Pierce, first base outfit eligible at 41. Um, this just in. Righties are hitting so many home runs off of Bartolo Colon. Lefties are hitting them just fine too. But righties are hitting them with so much power. So Steve Pierce could be a fun one tonight if he cracks that lineup in a good spot. Keep that in mind. Uh, Matty Carpenter, 39 against Rodon. Not ideal, but I still like him. But Jose Martinez against Carlos Rodon at 3,900. Someone to take a look at. Carl's a 4-7 total. Lefty's 339. Righty's 330. Matty Carp's first base, third base eligible. So if you're stacking, you go Jose 1. Matty Carp 2. Cardinals, we mentioned as a sneaky stack last night. They went off for 14 runs. Crazy. Um, you know, you got our Yonder Alonso at 3,800 look. But Justin Bohr at 36. If you can run into one against Peralta or catch up to one against Peralta. Uh, Jose Abreu is all the way down to 3,500 against Luke Weaver. We mentioned Weaver's been good, but he's also had so many blow-ups. You look at a White Sox team, lefty's 365, righty's 305. A Braves a $4,000, $4,500 caliber bat. And yeah, he's been slumping of late. I get it. But uh, good spot here at 3500 But massive slumps, so be careful there if you don't want to trust that. Other than that, the first base position, it's you know maybe a Wilmer Flores at 32 versus uh, Velasquez if you're fading Velasquez. And you want to go cheap. Uh, a Chris Davis. I don't always love Chris Davis, but if Sonny Gray is off, Chris Davis at 3K could be an uber value play. If you've been listening to this show all year, I this might be the first time I've recommended Chris Davis. He's averaging 6.2 a game in his last 10. He's averaging 5.4 a game against the New York Yankees. And his last few games, 5, 7, 14, 18, 5. Um, for him, that's really, really good. And that's $3,000. So that's stupid cheap. If you want to go to Crush Davis tonight, I actually can can back that call. I will back that call at 3K. You can look at that one. Second base, you got Altuve at 5K versus Bassett, which is a good spot when you look at the Houston Astros. 5-1-3 total. Lefty's 286. Righty's 325. So Bassett's the reverse splits guys to target those righty bats a little more than the lefties in that lineup. Ozzy Albies versus Caviglio at 49. Love that. Albies just consistently getting it done. Almost night in and night out, way more often than he doesn't. Yohan Moncada versus uh, Weaver at 42 could definitely like that one quite a bit. Cattell Marte and Coors at 41 is a good spot there as well versus Marquez. Um, Descalso at 39 also in play. Nice cheaper little D-backs action for you there. But Jed Jericho, second base, third base. We know how much he loves facing his lefties. He's 3,600 versus Carlos Rodon, so keep him in play for you there. Um, other than that. Maybe a Johnny VR at 3,200 versus Dan Straley for a punt if you need to go there. Chris Owens, 3,100. Ian Kinsler's 3,100 versus uh, Marco Gonzalez. He's another cheap you can look at. I, if you're not playing Gonzalez, you just want a, a punt. But, again, I hate targeting Marco Gonzalez. He's pretty damn good at baseball. So keep that in mind. Corey Spangenberg's only 2,800. He's been struggling immensely, though, so tread lightly. Going over to third base, you got Jose Ramirez at 57, Arenado at 56. Arenado went deep last night. He's at a great spot again tonight. Ramirez went deep as well. You got Alex Bregman who keeps crushing baseballs also at 5K. I say it every night. Those three guys, you could just pick your poison. They're so damn good at baseball. You got Jake Lamb in Coors, 4700 bucks versus Roddy Marquez. Keep him in play for you there. 
Uh, Travis Shaw at 43, I like a lot if you're going to come down the list a little bit against Dan Straley. Straley is usually a reverse splits type guy, but you know Brewers 4-4 total so far this year, though. Lefty's hit 380, righty's 412, so he still has a reverse splits, but right now he's just getting hit by everybody. So Travis Shaw at 4300 bucks, a nice cheaper third base target for you. Uh, Rafael Devers at 4K is in play, but again, remember, righty's power is way more than lefty's against Bartolo. Uh, Mark, uh, Matt Carpenter, 39, do you like that again? He had a nice game last night, continues to just get it done and throw Crow at me over and over and over again. Uh, Johan Camargo at 36 versus Caviglio. He's third base shortstop eligible. He's a play as a cheaper option at the third base position. Kyle Seeger at 35 versus Berea is a very nice cheapie. If you want to go that direction, I can definitely get behind that. Uh, as you go down a little farther, though, not nearly as good. Uh, is this, do, do, let me check this one real quick. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work. Thought so. Um, Miguel Rojas, 3K versus Peralta is someone else you could look at. Oh, and one other one. Come back down here. Uh, Charlie Culberson is 2900 bucks. Could be a nice cheapie if you need him, but uh, maybe it's only an extreme punt position. I'd almost rather have Chris Davis at 3K if you need it. Shortstop, you got Frenchy Lindor at 5700 Yep, he's in play yet again. Trevor Story and Coors, 53 Bogey at 5K versus Cologne is very, very nice. If you can get up there and pay for it. Um, otherwise, you drop down to the low 40s. You have Cattell Marte at 41. Nick Ahmed with DPS says versus a lefty, so be a little more careful, but he's there. Paul DeYoung, 3,900 against Rodon. It's a good spot for him if he was really cranking it out. He had 12 points last night. 7-5-7 seven, seven, uh, since his return from the DL. So he's got 7-5-7-12. Seven, seven, Been very productive in his four games back. So Paul DeYoung at 39 versus Rodon. It's a nice cheap tag. Remember when Paul Leon was crushing it before he got hurt, he was in the mid to high fours over and over again. So 39, get it while you can. You got guys like Yon Camargo again at 36, talked about him. Uh, JT Riddle at 36 in the GPP. Kiki Hernandez, outfield shortstop eligible at 35 versus the lefty Lucchesi. He's in play for you there. Uh, you get down to the bottom threes, though. Gets a little bleaker. Miguel Rojas again at 3K is someone you can look at. But not a ton of saves. Like a Freddie Gallus, 27. Is I guess in play for you there as well, uh, but nothing too crazy at the bolt at the bottom of shortstop. Outfield to wrap it up, you got Betts at six K. Just love this play against Bartolo Colon. Love it, love it, love it. Same with JD Martinez at fifty six. Both phenomenal, phenomenal plays. Charlie Blackman at fifty four versus Shelby Miller is outstanding as well. Benintendi keeps hitting at fifty three, so great spots there. You got you know David Peralta. I love it fifty two. AJ Pollock at fifty one. All Captain Obvious type stuff. A guy that might get overlooked up here is Aaron Hicks at 5K because you got Stanton at 5K, you got Judge at 55, and all the others. So Hicks could get well overlooked in that matchup. Christian Yelk at 49 uh, is in play free as well against Dan Straley. Uh, Eric Thames is interested at 47. Go down a little farther. There's so many options as usual at the outfield position. You got the likes of uh, Michael Brantley at 4,500. You could definitely take a chance there if you want to get some Cleveland exposure versus Tyler Molly. Molly's not like a complete gas can, but he has had his blow ups, so just keep that in mind when you're targeting Molly. But a Mitch Hanniger at 44, love that. He went deep last night, another good spot there. People will see the righty righty and walk away, but he's still in a good spot because he's just a damn good hitter to begin with. Uh, Seattle's got a 412 total. When we look at Jaime Barria, who they're facing, lefty's 314, righty's 433. That is an extreme reverse splits. So a guy like Mitch Hanniger at 44 will go way overlooked in this matchup. So keep him on your radar. You know, Ian Desmond at 43 and Coors. You can go there if you want to mention Mark Trumbo as a GPP type play. Uh, Nelly Cruz at 4,200. You can mix him up with some Hanniger. I like Hanniger more than Cruz, but both are in great spots there uh, with the reverse splits. But yeah, uh, Matty Kemp at 42 versus the Cassie. mentions Steve Pierce at 41 for his sneakiness against Cologne. Um, farther down you go, you got guys like Enciarte at 4K. Uh, Sensu Chu, you're not going against Chris Sale. I'm sorry. Uh, Scott Schebler at 4K could be interesting versus Carrasco. Carrasco, in his career, has been much, much worse at home than on the road. So keep an eye on the Cincinnati if you need some different pivoting GPP type stuff because, you know, you're going to look at all the peripherals because he's facing Carlos Carrasco. They have a 369 total. It's like, you know, six lowest on the slate, uh, 313 versus lefty, 312 versus righties. And he's a great pitcher. Don't get me wrong by any means. I'm not saying run to stack him. But if you want to be uber contrarian, the Reds could be interesting. Could be could also just completely ruin your night, but could be very interesting. But a guy like Kyle Tucker at 4K versus Chris Bassett could be in play for you if you want to be uh, get a little piece of the Houston auction. Offense at cheap. Josh Reddick's 3,900. Uh, Bassett does have the reverse splits, but those two are nice cheap back-end parts of that lineup. 
Gerardo Parra is a cheap outfield over Shelby Miller at 3,900. Definitely like that one. You got Jay up at 39 versus Marco Gonzalez. Uh, you scroll down farther. I got Harrison Bader at 3,700. A cheaper option there versus Carlos Rodon. He's a guy you can take a look at. You know, 14 points last night. 14-2, 26, 15, a 0-0, zero, zero, and a 14. So, you know, a couple of really nice games in here of late for Harrison Bader. Maybe he's starting to really get it going. In a good spot there versus Carlos Rodon for 3,700 for a cheaper option. If you're paying up for pitching, you're going to look at guys like Harrison Bader to fill out some lineup spots for you. You know, and Adam Jones at 37 versus Sonny Gray could be an option for you. Um, scrolling on farther, Brandon Nemo is down to 3,700. Curtis Granderson at 3,600. Versus Fulty is in play as well as a GPP type play. Like I told you yesterday, he's all or nothing. He only got two points last night, so you got to pick your poison. A guy I do like down here is a Daniel Palka at 3,600 versus Luke Weaver. Hitting in the middle of that Chicago lineup, if Weaver struggles, Palka could have a big boy game. Uh, he's got a lot of zeros in his game logs, but he's also got a lot of big, big nights. Um, so keep an eye on Palka at 36 and GPPs. Uh, it's not as comfortable as usually down here, but uh, definitely some options you can look at. Like a Gritchick at 3,500. Against um, against Fulty. Farther down you look, though, Kiki Hernandez at 35. Um, Derek Dietrich's 34, not running there. But Marcelo Zuna at only 3,300 versus Carlos Rodon is criminal. Absolutely criminal. Marcel put up a nine spot last night at 3,500. He's got nine, seven, and five in his last three. Sure, he's not lighting the world on fire. But, man, you get you get Ozuna versus Lefty in the old days. That was just a must play at 3,300 bucks. That's extreme value. And should be utilized quite a bit in that matchup. Um, we get down to the bottom threes, though. Not much to like down here, really. Not much. Chris Owens, maybe at 31 if he cracks the lineup. Um, you got, yeah, geez, because all the cheapies are facing like DeGrom or Sale. And I'm not really running to get into that fight. Again, Charlie Culberson is 2,900, third base outfield. He could be an option. Stupid cheap if you need to go there. Uh, Dexter Fowler is 2,900, but he's sucking. Tyler Naquin's 2900 bucks. If you have to, I'd rather not. So, yeah, not much is down here. Fran Mil Reyes is back, so you can keep an eye on him with San Diego at 2900 versus Maeda. If you want the GPP, just give me the long ball. Cole Calhoun's 2800 He paid off big time yesterday, but he's facing a lefty tonight, so keep that in mind. So, yeah, check lineups for some other value plays, but not a ton, ton at the bottom down there. So let's recap your pitching real quick before we get into the BVP and send you on your way. Up top, McCullers 1, Sale 2, DeGrom 3. In the middle, Maeda and Velasquez. Down below, Marco Gonzalez, Luke Weaver, Sonny Gray, Dylan Bundy. Lots to like there again. All those totals, high, high totals. Red Sox, 634. Um, you got Rocky, 604. D backs, 546. Indians, 53. Astros, 51. Yankees, around 5. Braves, almost 5. Cardinals, even 47. So lots of high totals yet again tonight. So you don't have to go straight to Coors, even though. Shelby Miller is really, really bad. So Colorado, I, I don't hate Colorado at all tonight. That's I wasn't on I wasn't on Coors last night. I can it's gonna be a little harder to fade tonight. Not saying it's a must play though. When you got some great matchups like you got the Red Sox versus Cologne, Rafael Devers two for three with two homers. Nuki Betts taking him deep once. JD Martinez taking him deep twice, four for fourteen. Mitchie two bags four for fifteen with a double and two homers. So yeah, he gives up the long ball quite a bit. Uh, Delight on the Shields Jr. He's four for nine with two doubles off Chris Sale. If you want to go that direction. Uh, Timmy Beckham, 7 for 16 with a double and two homers versus Gray. He's cheap at shortstop, and he leads off a lot, so that could be a uh, a cheap option there if you want at the shortstop position in Tim Beckham. Machado, Jones, Valencia have all taken Sunny Gray deep. Uh, Aaron Hicks, 2 for 7 with a homer on Bundy. Judge and Gregorius taking Bundy deep as well. Joey Votto, 5 for 11, two doubles and a homer off Carlos Carrasco. Michael Conforto, 4 for 7, two homers off Velasquez. Wilmer Flores has taken him deep as well. Uh, Eric Thames, Christian Yellick, Keon Broxton, Johnny VR have all taken Dan Straley deep. Do, 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 do. Uh, Marcus Simeon, 7 for 14 with a double off McCullers. Chapman, 3 for 7, 3 doubles. He's only given up one homer to the, to the A's. Uh, Tony Walters, 3 for 7 with a double and a homer off Shelby Miller. Carlos Gonzalez, a cheap outfield option, 7 for 18, 3 doubles and a homer. LeMahieu, Trevor Story, Charlie Blackman have all taken... Shelby Miller deep. This lineup has a 298 average, an 857 OPS, 3770 well, but 221 ISO against Shelby Miller. The Rockies are so much of a great play today. Goldie, 8 for 8, 15, two doubles, three homers off the Herman Marquez. AJ Pollock, 4 for 7. David Peralta, 7 for 17, three doubles and a homer. Chris Owens, Ketel Marte, Jake Lamb have all taken Marquez deep. The D backs are even better. 
They're hitting 355 off of Marquez with a 458 Wilba and a 300 ISO and a 1079 OPS. Coors could be ugly tonight. Um, as we move on a little farther, though, you got Mike Trout, 6 for 12, 3 doubles and a homer versus Marco Gonzalez. That's obvious. Mitch Hanniger, 2 for 3, 2 home runs off of Jaime Barria, our Mitchy, 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 Mitchy. Um, Freddie Galvez, 6 for 13, 2 doubles and a homer off Maeda. Hunter Renfro, 4 for 10 with a double and a homer. Margot, 4 for 11 with a double and a homer. Interesting numbers there. And Kiki Hernandez is a home run off of Joey Lucchesi. So there you have it, folks. Quick hits in the books for your Wednesday edition. Again, check us out on Twitter at the Sports Degens, the Sports Degens.com. Lots going on. John Deere Classic kicking off tomorrow. We got the Always Pressing PGA DFS podcast out there. We got Jesse's uh, PGA DFS preview. So tons going on there. Francisco's got you covered for the semifinal action of the World Cup, and we'll have your finals coverage later on. So much going on baseball wise, football wise, you name it, we got it. It's coming up. So go check it out. Thesportsdgens.com at thesportsdgens. Check out Draft, draft draft.com, drafts in your app store, promo code SD Sports at checkout for entry into a free $3 tournament. And come join us in the Slack chat as we get going more and more every day. But until then, this was MLB DFS Quick Hits, your Wednesday, July 11th edition. I'm out.